It's not clickbait. I'm getting, I'm getting a dog. I don't have him yet. Uh, but by the end of this video, by the end of this week, uh, you're going to, you're going to get to meet little, what's his name? I haven't named him yet. I have a short list of names. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here, but I have a short list of names. I'm going to get to know him before I name him. Uh, so, you know, that's coming. But what you need to know now, I suppose, is a little bit of the backstory of how, how, how did we get here? How, how, how did we get here? I don't think this is going to come as a surprise to many of you because uh, I think most of you know that I really like dogs a lot. I love dogs. <laughs> I miss my sister's dog. Actually, my sister's dog, Zephyr. This is Zephyr. Zephyr is my lock screen. And Zephyr is kind of the dog that I always imagined that I would get. Uh, just, you know, a kennel mutt. Like, I, I always wanted to get a puppy from the pound, a medium-sized dog. I was always, I was just imagining like, yeah, just get a mutt that's like a mix of, of like, I don't know, an Aussie lab, collie, whatever. Just like a high energy, running around, working dog. This is the kind of dog that I grew up with, the kind of dog that I always wanted. Not not a not a good dog for life in Paris. It's, it's been a process of me letting go of that dream for now, for a number of reasons. Uh, but obviously, have you seen, have you seen my apartment? Last video I made, it should give you a good idea of just how small this place. I, I need a dog that can fit uh, Paris apartment life. That's one thing. But again, I, I feel like I'm getting ahead of myself. I didn't really grow up with dogs. I actually, well, I didn't grow up with dogs. We had a cat when I was a kid, but uh, our mom was pretty anti-pet. Uh, so we didn't really have the opportunity to hang out with very many pets along the way in our own home. Uh, and it was my sister's persistence over the course of years that finally got us our first dog, Misha. When I say us, our first dog, what I mean is my sister's first dog. I also wasn't a huge fan at the time for a number of reasons. I think I felt a little bit threatened, to be honest, to have something cuter and fluffier in the house than me. The regal giant. Well, I didn't have my fluffy beard yet, although I did have hair back then. And I just, I wasn't used to dogs. I was 15, I think, when she came into the house, and it took me a while to get used to her. She also peed on everything. She peed every time she met somebody, the first time she met anyone, and then peed on my bed on my 16th birthday, peed all over the house all the time. There was just a lot of pee all over the place all the time. And uh, yeah, she was lightly traumatized, and that, that had its impact. But she grew on me, and I came to love Misha, and I miss Misha. If you haven't followed my sister's dog account, you definitely should do that. Uh, if for no other reason to go all the way to back to the beginning of time to meet baby Zephyr. But I have a picture of baby Zephyr on my wall. Because Zephyr was my sister's second dog. Look at that, oh my goodness. Oh, <laughs> look at him. Look at that face! <laughs> that's the, I can't help it. As soon as I see Zephyr, that's the voice. I can't, I'm sorry if that voice is disturbing to you, but I just, I just can't help myself. Baby Zephyr does something to me. I just cannot. Look at that face. Uh, I can't help it. So anyways, I loved, I love Zephyr. Zephyr was the dog that my sister adopted at the end of Misha's life. And so she had a puppy while she had her old dog and they kind of transitioned together at the same time. So unfortunately Misha passed, um, but Zephyr came into our lives and I absolutely adore Zephyr. You've seen Zephyr in my vlog vlog before many times in, in, in different places, both in Washington and in California. And I just love Zephyr so much. Zephyr would be too big for my apartment. I understand that. I cannot have Zephyr here. You know, I could probably have her in, in a larger apartment and someday I will have a larger apartment. But the question becomes, do I wait for that inevitable someday or do I bring a dog into my life now? And the answer is obviously apparently now. Now is the time. But I've been thinking about it for the last few years and it's been a real I've had a lot of questions and a lot of concerns and a lot of things to get used to, both in how things are different here with dogs in France and how just my lifestyle doesn't permit some of the things that I always thought that I wanted and would still like to have someday. Which of course begs the question that I've been asking myself for years. What kind of dog should I get? Ultimately, I think there are four criteria that I think are pretty important. And unfortunately, all dogs poop, so that, that can't be one of them. Of course, one of the first and most important elements is finding a dog that can actually fit into my cramped Parisian apartment lifestyle, which uh, is more about temperament than anything. It, oddly enough, I've seen a lot of posts saying that Great Danes make really good apartment dogs, but um, a Great Dane would take over most of my apartment. So size, size matters to me too. The other thing is sociability, like having a dog that can go out, obviously life in Paris is very tight and sociable. You have to be able to go to the spaces where you can just hang out, have lunch, and I'm gonna, I mean, I, I'm, I'm very sociable. So if I have a dog that doesn't do well meeting other people, it's not gonna go very well. I also want a dog that can be active, right? Like I really want a dog that can run with me. Something that I think would be so cool. Train a dog, run with you. Obviously a good way to get the dog a lot of exercise. 
but I just think it'd be fun to always have a running partner. That would be great. Like genuinely amazing. And finally, travel. Travel's really important, both around town and internationally. You know, I love biking around. I'd love to have a dog that could go with me on my bike. You can obviously train some dogs to run alongside a bike, but that's probably a little bit ri probably a little bit risky given the uh, nature of driving around Paris. <laughs> Biker, no. So uh, again, size is kind of of a premium there. Now, of course, for the right dog, I'm willing to make sacrifices in any of these areas. But if I could find one that hit all of them. That's a Nexus that I'd have to go with. Nexus, that's not a bad name idea. So one of the big motivators to actually get my driver's license, which if you haven't seen that video, check it out. It's you, you would not think that watching a video about a guy getting his French driver's license would be interesting. I promise you it is more interesting than you're probably thinking it is. I definitely was thinking a lot about Okay, well, how do I how do I move with my dog? The main thing is that I really you <laughs> as I go I'll do it after I pay for about pay the <gasps> where's our ticket? One of the overriding things that is uh, guiding my decision as well is that I really really want to get a puppy. I want to have that experience of raising a dog from the youngest age to get the full experience and to really know and understand dogs from the ground up. So that no matter what kind of dog I get in the future, I can jump in at that stage and and know what I'm doing. And I just want to have a puppy. I want to have my own puppy, which constricts or contracts the uh, the options. But we're, we're we're jumping way ahead now. You shouldn't be seeing this footage right now in the car. Let's go back, go back a little bit. It's a question that's been plaguing me for a long time, and it's actually tied in with what I feel like is unlocked things to actually happen now. I could get three out of four, right? Apartment friendly, sociable, and travel friendly. Those those you can find. And I was actually thinking of French Bulldog for a while. I've met a bunch of them around here, ironically enough, and they're always so sweet and so nice. And the only thing that was hanging me up was that I wouldn't be able to run with them. Uh, generally speaking, they aren't running dogs and most snub-nosed dogs aren't running dogs. And that's also one of the big hangups I've had. I've never really wanted a snub-nosed dog for that reason, as well as health concerns down the line. But then a buddy of mine who has a Boston Terrier told me a couple things that kind of convinced me to go for the Boston Terrier. I'd come across Boston Terriers in my research uh, along the way, but one of the things that never really clicked for me, they said they were active. They're medium energy, which is good because they can chill in the apartment. They need definitely need like 30 minutes to an hour of exercise to my understanding. I didn't realize that they were able to run. And then Glenn told me that his old Boston uh, that he had for like, I think 15 years, was able to run five to 10K with him a few times a week, which, is impressive and is more than I could have expected from a little dog like that. They also are incredibly sociable, very friendly, very confident. Like we said, apartment friendly, travel friendly. I One of the big anxieties I had until just two days ago, I didn't record this conversation, but I called Delta just to see, would, would I be able to fly home with this pupper? Because the snub nose can't fly under, uh, under the plane. And uh, they said that, yeah, they didn't even seem that worried about weight, which is one of the big concerns as well. She seemed much more concerned with whether or not the carrier would fit under the seat in front of him. So very travel friendly. Hopefully we don't run into any problems. And then exercise friendly. It just seems like the perfect, the perfect combination for me. They're also known as America's little gentleman. And I'm like America's medium sized to large gentleman, right? Here in Paris. I'm one of them, at least. I'm not like, not like my buddy Sarah, who's the only American in Paris, but it just made sense. And I just kind of hit the gas and go. The thing about Boston's is that they're not really very, they're not common in France. So when I was looking at all the rescue websites, they just weren't coming out. I think on uh, 30 million d'amis, the most recent posting about a Boston Terrier is from 2008. And it was a lost Boston Terrier. So it's not, not, not the most promising, but thankfully it's different here in France where there is not a concern about puppy mills, at least not as much. The country has registered like official breeders and Glenn, I know somebody who went through a breeder that was reputable and official and checked all the boxes. And so I gave her a call and then Pushan joined me for another call with her just to get to know, like, how do we feel about her and how do we feel about getting a dog from her? Allo. Allo, bonjour. Ça va? Ça va? Oui, et vous? Oui. Oh, il est tout petit, il est mignon, on le prend dans les bras, dans le canapé. Oh, c'est super. Et puis, euh, donc, il va prendre l'habitude, évidemment. Euh, et puis après, quand il va être plus grand, on va dire, ah bah non, 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 tu, tu montes plus sur les canapés. Je suis, je suis contente de lui rencontrer aussi. Bon, mais beaucoup, bon, merci beaucoup et euh, à très bientôt alors. C'est moi. Allez, au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. 32 minutes. Dude, that's exciting. I'm excited. Yeah, she's good. It's uh, comforting to hear her speak. Yeah, she's really, really nice. You, you, you ready to meet your little nephew? Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> Next Friday. <laughs> Next Friday. Yeah, we gotta go. We're gonna go. We're gonna go. We're gonna go. So first I think is the question, 
Why now? And to be honest, I don't really have a great answer for that. I feel like the answer is, you know, you know when you have a big decision that you've been putting off or you've been mulling over for a really long time and it never quite felt right? Well, now it feels right. Like, it feels like the time, the moment. This is, this is when I should do it. And so, I guess that's why now. Yeah, the more I think about it and the more I talk about it, the more right it feels. That's Robert, my grandparents, bobtail cat that they had when I was a kid. It's so cute. I'm stopping in a print shop to get this picture of my grandparents and I laminated that my grandma sent me recently. And uh, the smiles on it are good. And it, it, the, I think part of the reason too that I'm think now is the time to get a dog is I feel like the happiest and healthiest I've ever been. Now, which seems like the right time to add someone else into my life. And a dog is someone that I've wanted to add to my life for years never been the right time. I think there's a lot that I, I'm gonna learn from a dog. There's a lot that a dog will teach me about. Everything from love to responsibility, structure, self-sacrifice, a lot of different things like that. But I don't want to personally rely on the dog for my own emotional health and well-being. It's just my personal kind of take on it. Like that hasn't been a totally conscious decision, but I realize that's connected with my comfort in adding a dog to my life now, is that sense of, I feel stable. I feel like I can offer a safe space for that dog. And that makes it feel like it's the right time. It's also the right time in the sense that like my whole life is kind of blown up, as many of our lives have, most of our lives have, both because of the pandemic, but also because my habits have completely changed because over the last four months I've been on a diet, so my eating habits have changed, my spending habits have changed because of the whole French tax situation. Everything's just kind of up in the air, and I feel like I'm at the point where I have the chance to redefine a lot of elements of my life moving forward, and I'm not entirely sure I want to keep it going the same way that it was before. I know it, I, I know I don't. That's been the whole trend of trying to get healthier and, you know, set boundaries and, I mean, onward and upward, right? And want a dog do the onward and uprooting with me? All right. My meeting with the vet went very well. I just went to meet the neighborhood vet. Super nice. One of the nurses talked with her, got the, the, the fees. I just wanted to make sure that everything was clear. And so I'm already talking about him as a him because I'm pretty sure I'm going to get myself a dog. But one thing that could throw a total wrench in all of this and might end it quickly, is I need to ask permission from my landlady. I've ne we've never talked about having a dog here. I don't know what her opinion about it's gonna be. She has family members with dogs, so I'm assuming that she's dog friendly. I know she likes dogs. Uh, whether or not she's okay with me having a dog here is another question. My thought is that she'll probably be hesitant at first and hopefully will come around to the idea, but it's potential that she could kill the whole thing right now. In which case, uh, you won't be seeing this video. I guess, spoiler alert, you know what's gonna happen. I don't know what's gonna happen. Hi, Kiki. Hi. How are How you? are you? I was about to call you today. Oh, oh were you? I didn't get back to you. Yes. There's someone else that I'm hoping to introduce you to, but I wanted to see if it was okay with you. I'm thinking about adopting a dog, and I wanted to make sure that it was okay with you that I had a dog in the, in the maid's chamber. Yes. Great. It's fine with me. Do they allow it? It's yeah. Bad. Oh, yeah. There, there are dogs everywhere. My neighbor has a cat, and there are dogs all over the building. So just wanted to make sure that you were okay with that. Yes. I'm fine with you. As long as you don't leave them running around upstairs in my apartment. No. Nope. Thanks for the call. Absolutely. Thanks for talking to me. Oh, it's my pleasure. Mine, too. Okay. Take care. All right. Bye. Talk to you soon, Kiki. There you go. That's super cool. That was awesome. She's great. I love her. She's so awesome. She's like, she is my number one patron. If you didn't know, one of the major components of why and how I could afford to move back to Paris when I was in one of the deepest, darkest holes of my life five years ago uh, was because of her, because she had provided this for me back when I was volunteering for Mercy Ships. We're digging into it. If you want the details, I wrote a book about it. You can you go read the book. I will link to it below. It's, it's a book about how I got here, but she took pity on me when I was a poor volunteer uh, from that hospital ship trying to find housing here. So she gave me this place when it was completely empty and full of 50 year old furniture that was literally falling apart. Ended up loving having me here, thankfully, and said that it was my place. She was like, you can stay here until I die. And I was like, please never die, because this is amazing. Uh, and she's amazing, and I'm so grateful for her. And she's literally changed my life. So if she didn't want me to have a dog, I wouldn't get a dog to respect her. Uh, and thankfully she's up for me having a dog so I can get a dog. I've literally checked all the boxes, talked to the vet. The vet said it was a great idea. They were like, Boston Terrier, really good choice. 
ran through the reasons why they thought it was a good choice. That was really nice. I'm feeling less weird about the whole, like, um, not adopting from a rescue. Like, I usually, I, it, it's still that little niggling thing in there where you're like, but next time I would like to rescue a dog someday for sure. But like, it's, I think these are all the right decisions. The only thing that's really holding me up at this point uh, is my, my, a slight fear of commitment. It's a big commitment and I wanna make sure I'm making a good decision. Um, and I've sat down, I've thought through so many things. I've done a lot of math. I've asked a lot of questions. I think I've figured out like all of the costs involved from food every month. Like what is the monthly cost of this? What kind of emergency fund do I need to have? Which is probably gonna happen at some point. Just how can I make sure that I can take care of this dog for the next 10 to 15 years? And obviously you, we don't know, it's the future. We're just making a commitment. We're jumping in together. I have no, there are no more barriers to doing this. I basically just need to, just need to do it. That's so, but like that, ah, she's so sweet. Like she makes my, she, God, she makes my life so much better. Anyways. Uh, I gotta figure out how I'm getting, I gotta figure, I gotta figure this out now. Speaking of people who make my life better, by the way, this is a good chance to say thank you to, well, that was off culture. Thank you to my patron producer of the day, Doug Kaiser. Thanks so much for being here, man. And to all my patrons for just being a big part of this. They got to find out about this a little bit early, earlier than the rest of you. So if you want to get like the early inside scoop on, you know, puppies and things like that. Also gave them some tips on road tripping based on the lessons we learned from what well, you're about to see us go driving out. But before we go driving out, thanks to my patrons and thanks to you for watching. And uh, let's, go, let's go buy some puppy swag. Well, now I've got to start collecting puppy supplies. It's exciting. I have about a week to my uh, shit together. I'm going to be meeting some friends down here who are also adopting. I've got a handful of friends. It seems like they're all adopting dogs at the same time. Emily and Joshua are getting an Australian Shepherd Lab mix, which is definitely closer to what I always imagined I would get. So they're doing a little bit of a supply run themselves right now as they get ready. And they invited me to come down and join them. And so, yeah, why not? I've got some stuff I need to get. I don't need to buy much. There are a handful of necessities that I need. She said that for his health and for his teeth, he needs extremely hard toys, which is not what I would have expected, but he needs very hard toys, otherwise he might end up hurting himself. So, gotta get him some tough toys, and then we should be good to go. And then it's all snuggles from there. So we're gonna go to a little store called Moustache. What do you think? Oh, they're there. Ta -da. Ta -da. Hi. Hi, <laughs> yeah. Puppies. 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 <laughs> Are you gonna make it another two weeks till <laughs> no. you get your dog? It's another month. <laughs> a month? Oh yeah, you got a ways to go. Hello, buddy. Oh. A real piece of advice. This is something I just made up right now. But look, when you squish it together, it's like my fingers hit each other really hard. Oh no, that's puffy. My thing is, I'm not sure if I'm gonna get anything. First of all, I guess that one that one looks like it'd be perfect for mine actually. This is so cute. This that's is, adorable. This is so New England. <laughs> Fat face. Well, this makes it feel a lot more real. I gotta, I don't wanna get him a cozy bed, it's true. So many options for toys. Good gravy. Behind. It's just cool to see how everyone around me. I feel it's nice. Like friends, the concierge at the front of our building here, my neighbor, so many people are just like so excited to meet the puppy. It's just really cool to, I don't know, double down on that sense of feeling like, oh wow, like I have I have a good community here and I'm so grateful for my friends and I'm excited. I'm I'm getting it's starting to feel really real and it's feeling it's 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 exciting. little bit of an emotional roller coaster, some ups and downs. And I recognize, sorry for the construction noise, it just follows me around. It's like a, a form of grief almost, which might sound weird when you're getting a puppy, but the reason being, there's gonna be a lot of sacrifice, a lot of big changes to my life at least. And I, I think a lot of it comes, stems down to the unknown. I'm, I've been most stressed by the unknown elements and really excited about the known elements. I'm actually really looking forward to training. I'm really looking forward to snuggles and introducing them to people. And, 
road trips and there's so much to look forward to and so much to be excited about. And when I found myself being kind of stressed and, and, and freezing, it's my fear of commitment and it's the unknowns. Like, what am I gonna have to give up to keep this dog? And those aren't good reasons not to do anything. You'll never know everything. And I gotta, I gotta commit to something at some point. Are they driving pylons? What is going on? So I'm gonna go get the dog tomorrow. I realize this video is all over the place for time. But yesterday, Wednesday, was kind of my peak stress day where I was really processing it. And I could feel just like, I was a little shut down and a little bit like really thinking it through, asking those hard questions like, is this really what I wanna do? And by last night I was like, yeah, yeah. And now I feel, I feel great. I'm still a little bit nervous, but I, I, I can't wait. So today is my last day as a free man, as a free bachelor, fatherless, wait, fatherless, childless, dogless, human being. And to be honest, I feel great. Yesterday, I think I just had to get through the final processing. And I know it's gonna be challenging and I know it's not gonna be always straightforward, but I'm genuinely really excited for everything, everything that I can be excited for. And it's just kind of like that whole thing, like how do I carry him? How do I get him around? You know, how do I, I just, stuff I'm gonna figure out. And I know I'm gonna figure it out. And the really cool thing is how supportive my friends, my community have been. I've had multiple phone calls from friends who have dogs or have had dogs. Gwen's dog being bad beset by my friend Jane, she just gave me a call to let me know everything she's been learning about Boston's through him. Lindsay gave me like a little natural Kong, uh, which was really, really cool. And I, ne I needed like another one of those. Idiot. That's, That's like awesome. Eco Eco-friendly bouncy one. So Sean going out to pick the dog up with me and you know, giving a plushie for the dog. I'm gonna go get the car, uh, rented a car, and then tomorrow morning, driving out and we're picking him up. And that you're gonna finally get to meet him. You've been waiting this whole video. You're like, how did I not skip to the end already? Maybe you didn't even think you could skip to the end until now, but now it's too late because it's already hot. Let's go get the dog. Quick pastry stop. I didn't. I didn't know that there was a French bastards in the 17th, but uh, fun, and let's get the hell out of town. Ready? I was trying to grab that invader from here, but I couldn't oh. get it. Oh, let's go. Quick stop in the mouth for uh, lunch with Boone. And it's puppy time. I'm getting excited. I'm actually like really, I'm really excited and a little bit, I'm actually kind of nervous. This is good. Phenomenal day. We're gonna have to leave Le Mans for another time. We got a little tour from Boone, which is great. We gotta go pick up a puppy. What are we doing? Let's get out of here. Oh. All right, we're here. Two yeah. minutes away. Two minutes away. Any cold feet? No, not at all. I feel like the two days ago, I was asking myself that question. Like, if it's not gonna be for me, I need to know that now and back out, like before I ever get the puppy. And I, you know, I walked through all those feelings and I feel great now. Like I feel, I feel really good. I'm a little nervous. I'm like, I've got a little bit of anxiety to meet him. Obviously, I'm really, but I'm excited. It's a good, it's a good anticipation. Time for me to run away with this car. So I have a with the monkey. I like this. Ah ouais, il a bien mangé. J'adore manger. Ouais. Et euh, j'ai beaucoup de mal à le rationner. Parce que, euh, <rire> en fait, il était encore avec sa maman jusqu'à tout à l'heure. Oui. Donc forcément, il mange avec elle. Et, euh, mais il mange plus qu'elle, je crois. Ah ouais, ah, ah, ouais déjà. Et, euh, tout, chaque jour, je le voyais euh, gonfler comme une... Euh... Arrête, ça suffit. C'est le potate. Bittersweet taking him away from his home. I saw the mom, she was sniffing. Oh, I know. Time to time to come to a new home. I gotta get the gate. Hold on. You come with me, buddy. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> time to get the gate. Oh yeah, we got this. I accidentally stopped recording somewhere in there. Uh. 
it's should... definitely, I mean, in all the research that I did on the dogs that are suitable for city life, they, they always come up. He's so sleepy. Uh, all right, I'll let you sleep. Hoping for some pee here. Anywhere really will do, uh, as long as it's outside. You'd rather just sit on my feet. I need you to pee, buddy. Come on, let's go pee. It's getting weird, man. It's getting weird. We didn't succeed at peeing right away. We tried twice. So, I'm gonna chill in here. I might feed him. Feeding might get him to pee. Playing might get him to pee. We'll see. I'll take him out every 20 minutes or so until he does pee. Here you go. Got it? Talking to camera right now might be a mistake, but he's settled in and uh, I think, oh yeah, he's gonna start moving. The kennel training is going, it's well, it's good. It's just kind of rough. Cause like, you know, he cries for the first time he cried for a couple minutes settled. And then it's been 10, 15 minutes after that, I'm putting him in the kennel back and forth. We play some games. He goes in and out of it. You know, I'm just trying to make sure he's comfortable in it. And he knows it's not forever. It's just a relaxing place. He gets to go to rest, but you got to put up with a little bit of crying and then he settles and then he's fine. So thankfully I think we're in for a good one here. The question is, whether or not I just try to go to sleep now. I'm really tired and I'm really ready to go to bed. I need to shower and stuff. So I think I'll shower and get ready for bed. If he's up, I'll take him out one more time. It only, it took a dozen. I'm not even exaggerating. It took at least 10, but I think like 12 attempts going outside before he finally went pee the first time. So we want, that was still a victory. He still peed. So he peed, he's settling okay in the kennel. Uh, we'll see how this first night goes. I'm gonna sleep well, but I don't know for how long. <laughs> it was a brutal, brutal first night. Like, traumatizing, but I will, for me, I, he, he's fine. Well, yeah, probably both of us. I'll fill you in on that story next week. I think this is a good introduction to having the puppy. If you wanna find out what his name is, so do I. Tune in next week. I, theoretically, I think I have to have a name for him by then. But thanks for watching. He's sleeping right now, chilling out. We're making great progress, huge strides, like massive. But it was quite the roller coaster over the weekend. I've learned a lot, I've grown a lot just in a few days, and I'll share that all with you in the next video. This is the first time in like three days I've been able to just sit down and get some work done. But I'm learning, quickly, so is he. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. I don't know how much puppy content there will be in the future, but I guarantee there will be some. If you want puppy content, of course, let me know in the comments below. And otherwise, I will see you bright and early one of these mornings sometime soon, right here. Oh yeah, go follow me on Instagram. There will definitely be puppy content on Instagram and my stories and uh, maybe a little bit on TikTok and then we'll see how much of it filters through to YouTube. But I mean, next week for sure. I gotta find out what his name is. I'll stop rambling. See you later.